guys, welcome back. It's uh, Ari and Victor here, so don't mind the purring. <clears throat> Alright, so last time we did our line art. We slapped that together pretty quick, and then the next video after that, we went ahead and did our basic color cell shade. For this one, we'll be adding our texture, our lighting, our shading, and uh, everything else in between. Pretty excited about this, let's go. Alright, so the first thing you want to do, at least what I do, is the eyes, because they're the most important part, I feel, of the piece. Now, uh, they do take a lot of detail, and um, a lot of different steps for that. Now, usually what I do, as you will see throughout the video, for my shading and my lighting technique, is I do two different layers of shadow. I do one that is a slightly different color. For example, it, if it's a stark red, I would use an orange, like I did for the the light for the eye there, and then on top of that I would do a lighter yellow color. It usually helps the eyes have a pop and kind of a misty effect. Usually I'll do a little bead of white on the top, and just blend a little bit with blur. Now um, for the shading it's a kind of similar thing. I usually do a darker red and then an almost black color. Um, that's of course custom to each piece you're doing, but that's usually my, uh, my version on how to go ahead and uh, color that stuff in. Sorry, this is uh, going to be a little bit of a long video. <laughs> Doing all this cell shading is pretty annoying. Okay, <clears throat> anyways, uh, so a little tip here is I usually shade my eyes with a blue color, very light blue color, and I blend it in. Um, I wouldn't recommend using as dark blue as I have here for the creases of the eye, just because uh, it's supposed to mimic more of a wolfy eye here. And you don't usually want to do that unless you're making a furry. <laughs> Alright, uh, anyways, on to the next thing here. Um, when you're putting down your base colors, like we did in the last video, uh, the best thing to do is when you're doing the clipping above it, if you don't like the color you originally had, for example, skin is more yellow before I change it to a more peachy color, I would definitely recommend um, using that clipping source for this very reason. Uh, really easy to go ahead and just bucket over the entire thing and then from there you can uh, pick your colors of your new color or the new offshoots of your new color Blech. <laughs> and uh, go ahead and change your piece to the proper color setting um, I do tend to have my my what is it called uh, my different shading layers on different layers if that makes any sense so like the lighter shading and then the darker shading are usually on two different layers here. You can probably see that on the side. But uh, for some of them I don't do that, especially for the skin, being a little lazy. <laughs> uh, but I do tend to blend them and then I usually do darks and then lights if you haven't noticed. Um, it is very important to add lights, the same as it is to add the darks. If you're adding the lights, you've got to have the other part of it. Otherwise your picture will tend to look flat and unbalanced. Um, that's it. Uh, what I'd say is pretty good for the skin. The uh, tips are the same kind of for that, is change the color a little bit, make it a little darker, um, in order to make your piece pop a little more realistically. Now, um, we're gonna go ahead and start on the hat. Now, um, I know that the suit here is, is uh, you know, is blue. But the whole outfit was actually supposed to be green, because this is uh, Raymond, as I've mentioned in the past. Raymond from one of my stories. Um, he's it's, you know, kind of like a little Red Riding Hood story. I mean, I kind of wanted to make a terrible story, so nobody would judge me for my first story. Terrible idea, but, you know, all good. So, um, for cases like this, when you have a kind of a unique object, you do want to make sure that you are using the light factor, but also here on the left side, you want to definitely be using uh, that shading there, or not the shading, sorry, the lighting over there in the corner. It's very important that you use that so your picture doesn't also look flat. It has it more of a realistic kind of if you were to if you were to shade a uh, what is it? If you were to shade a sphere, it would have a little bit of that reflective light on that other side over there. Anyways, uh, the hat's basically done. You buy size a little bit of extra dark shading, which does help quite a bit. And I wouldn't discourage using an extra dark layer, especially if your picture's going to be a little bit darker. All right. Um, and of course the feather. Um, for feathers actually, because, you know, sometimes they end up looking like something else, um, I do add these little white, uh, what are they called? Filaments, a part of the plume. Um, I don't remember what they're called. If you put it in the section below. 
<laughs> I'm sure I'll uh, I'll give you a thumbs up and say, oh yeah, that's right. Anyways, uh, feathers are also a little shiny, so I did add some shine there. Um, now here is a mistake that I wanted to point out to you guys. When you don't do the clipping, what ends up happening is uh, you'll end up well, sorry, not clipping it. When you end up uh, forgetting to separate your clipping layers. What'll end up happening is this, if you, for example, I drew the ear tufts and the gray of the ear on the same layer. So as you can see, the white's kind of popping out. And the method I use with the clipping is supposed to <laughs> avoid that, because it's so annoying to have to erase your entire piece. Anyways, <clears throat> so, because of that problem, you know, that, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I kind of skipped ahead because it was kind of a pain to go ahead and put that together. Now, um, I have a habit of doing like a hair texture and then lowering the opacity and the brightness on it so it kind of blends in and also helps add a little bit of extra texture to your piece. Uh, I would definitely recommend that uh, you do it for hair, um, though I'm kind of lazy for this one, well, I'm gonna do it for hair. I did kind of skip ahead, uh, but not much, you know. <laughs> All right, anyways, back to, oh no, he's leaving. <clears throat> back to uh, different ways that I do hair. I usually do an overlay. It's back. <laughs> I usually do some sort of an overlay where I can uh, set the hairs to a brightness level to go ahead and uh, add more of a realistic texture to your piece. Now, um, this one I honestly was being a little bit lazy. Sorry for that. I mean, I think it still looks pretty good. Uh, to be fair, I I, uh, I completed this piece within a uh, few hours, so I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, making sure you add in those darks and lights, as always, and if you already outline in your line art what you're doing with the, um, the shading, it's very important to keep the darks right under the hair pieces. Alright, so uh, now for the tail, I did a similar thing that I did before, you know, lights, darks, you already know that drill, but um, I did the same sort of a overcross, but you'll see that in just a second, because I decided to do the tip of the tail instead first. Yeah. Um, I usually actually use this sort of an off-blue tint for tails. Um, the reason why is because, well, usually it, I feel like it's kind of a unique thing, but also it adds a little more spice to your picture versus just having it gray, you know. Anyway, so adding that nice little texture over the top, la la la, a little more spice of life. Ah. <laughs> Alright, so... Now we're going to be getting more into the clothing, more than the hat, you yeah. uh, From here, I actually have quite a bit of trouble um, figuring out how to do clothing. I always kind of round the edges out at the bottom uh, for the reason that it does help, I feel like, adding that depth of shadow and, and a little bit of perspective there because that's important to have. Um, also, of course, when you're always drawing, you want to have your light source in a defined position so you're not drawing all these cute little light things everywhere. Uh, I'd say that's very important. Um, by the way, guys, I am not using the airbrush tool. If you've noticed, I'm using the blur tool for most of my picture here. Um, I very rarely use the airbrush, like I am now, but uh, I feel like it, I don't know, maybe it's just a preference thing, but I feel like it's better to have an uh, airbrush to help, you know, coat something in versus blur the colors. That doesn't make sense, but I don't know. Anyways, um, I was actually planning on making this coat green from the beginning, like I said. So, when we do that, of course, like I just did, was changing the um, hue and saturation of both layers, the shading and the regular, to go ahead and make it the desired color you want. Uh, just kind of like what I did with the skin. And, uh, by the way, guys, sorry the quality is so low, it's a lot better blended <laughs> on my actual computer. Now, um, handkerchief is really easy. Um, you want to make sure that if you're using that same sort of shading technique I did for the hair, that you blend very, very well for anything that's going to be soft with a, you know, a very plushy cloth. And we are nearing the end of the video, my friends. Um, I mean, to show layers, of course, you're going to make the bottom layer a little darker, a little bit of light. But besides that, that's basically what I've got for this portion of the video. Um, yeah. Going from forward here, we're going to go ahead and do the background next. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your picture, and I hope it's helped out quite a bit. Um, yeah, in the meantime, I will definitely see you in the next video for background. Keep an eye out for um, this color that's going to be coming up soon, because soon our picture's going to look like that. In the meantime, 
Uh, keep an eye for that color background, and you will see my next video. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.